Mom, maybe you should describe what aloha means and like the spirit of Hawaii. You treat everyone the way that you would want your grandma or your mother or your other families to, to be treated. And that's the spirit of aloha is, is just that. Be kind and just treat everyone the way that, that you want your family to be treated. And that's exactly what he grew up, how he grew up, and that's how he was. My name is Taryn Bain. My boyfriend, Travis Jordan, was murdered by the 4th Precinct, November 9th, 2018. I believe race definitely played a part in TJ's death. I've said this before, had it been a white friend of ours leaving our house that day, I think that person would still be alive. How much did TJ weigh at first? Nine pounds. <laughs> he, was the second, he was the second biggest baby that day. How did he grow up in Hawaii shape? He was wonderful, he enjoyed himself, always wanted to go to the water. So we always went to the water. When he came here and he called me and he said, Mom, you know, I feel really different. They don't think I'm black, so what am I? And I said, you have to be proud of your heritage. You know, you're Hawaiian. You're part Hawaiian, you're part Japanese. You're part black, your dad, was, your father was black, you know? And it's like, don't be ashamed, you speak up for that. Some people might not think that he's black enough, native Hawaiian enough, Asian enough, and it hurts because he's not here to be his own voice and during a wellness call. When he was sad, he was looking for the, the medical field is wrought with systemic racism and that's a, a national epidemic as well as specifically in our tiny bubble of the north side. I think he actually kind of liked living on the north side. I enjoy living on the north side. The healthcare system, it fails you too. Like, especially like a man, a black man, you know, it fails. They fail you. <laughs> Stigmas about uh, mental health in the black community. Um, one is that it doesn't exist. When I think about mental health and uh, kind of just the spectrum of how it presents itself. You have people who could have either early intervention or intervention in a way where their support and redressing of their mental health issues could be resolved pretty, pretty quickly and pretty um, early. However, because of some of that taboo around talking about it or stigma that's connected to it, sometimes people get to this point of like having a psychotic break. I had gone and I had asked, well, how can we help? What kind of resources can we, can we look for? We were handed a sheet of paper with telephone numbers. And I thought, this is it? Like, thank you for the telephone numbers, but now what? <laughs> like, I'll call them, but I have to do all the research myself. How do we get them into a program? How do we pay for the program? How do we, you know? What program is good? What isn't good? good? Even if we reached out and left telephone numbers, many times there weren't any callback. No I mean, well, nobody because there weren't. Out. I mean, if it was inpatient, like there weren't beds open, there wasn't anywhere to go. <laughs> I called 311. 311 couldn't do anything. They transferred me to three to 911 immediately. Little did I know that two white rookie cops who hadn't even been on the force for more than a year. No training in de-escalation, no training on how to preserve someone's life would be the one that made the call. Yeah, I feel like if he lived 
in southwest Minneapolis, he would probably still be alive because every single precinct in Minneapolis had a co-responder program besides the 4th Precinct. The Minneapolis Police Department's co-responder program involves mental health professionals who respond directly to mental health calls alongside officers. Right now, only the 3rd and 5th police precincts that serve South Minneapolis take part in the program. But based on statistics from MPD, the program seems to be working. Well, I think he had a really strong support system here. We did everything for him, trying to, on a scale of one to 10, probably 10, 11. <laughs> one of the conversations that I've been trying to talk more about is not necessarily mental health, but it's about political health. Every human being belongs to a family system. That family system is actually the system that's responsible for the emotional, psychological health of that individual. Furthermore, that family system belongs to a community system. And so the community system is responsible for the psychological, emotional uh, well-being of each family. And then the community itself is responsible by the institutions and organizations uh, that, that also are a part of that community. I did feel like the community failed TJ. There are a lot of people who think that, you know, like he got what he wanted, he wanted to die, and you know, there is such a thing as suicide by cop. But you know what, like that's just a made up term. There is no such thing as suicide by cop. It's murder. I think what needs to happen is to demilitarize the police system. Well, I always go back and think like, would any of these officers that are found in these situations, I guess if I could talk to them, I would be like, well, if that was your brother or your cousin, would you have shot him? Then why is it different? None of us deserve to feel that alone and then left with the option of two armed police officers outside your home. Life is hard. It shouldn't be made harder by the people who are supposed to help you. For our family, justice isn't about arresting and charging these two officers that were involved. They followed what they were taught, right? And so it really has to come from changing how officers are trained, how they're recruited, um, all of these different, like justice for us would be an overhaul of no those justice, procedures. No justice, no peace. Prosecute the police. No justice, no peace. Prosecute the police. Travis Jordan gave more in 36 years of his life because of the way he lived. He lived with a generous spirit. It, he made it look easy. I thought that I was gonna marry him. And they took away their chance of a happy life together. You have to represent your loved one or else they're never gonna be known. They're just gonna be another faceless victim and we do not want that to happen to TJ. In Hawaii, we are brought up never to face your back to the wave because the wave will come no matter and knock you down and sometimes kill you. So when we go through all of this, you know, there are times where the wave gets me. I'm not looking, the wave gets me. And it buckles me to my knee. It's the last thing. I can't even describe it. 